Liebe Mitbürgerinnen und Mitbürger, chers et compatriotes, cari concittadini, dear fellow citizens, dear participants and guests. Guten Tag, bonjour, buon pomeriggio, good afternoon in Thailand and good morning in Switzerland. Sabatikrap, yindi ton rap tuktan. Welcome to today's virtual town hall meeting of the Swiss Embassy in Bangkok and thank you for your interest. I am Pedro Zwalen, the Ambassador of Switzerland to Thailand, Cambodia and Lao PDR. During today's live session, I will be joined online by two special guests from Switzerland. It is my great pleasure to welcome Mr. David Christing, Director General of the Consular Directorate at the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs in Bern, so uh, of my Foreign Ministry, and his deputy, Mr. Laurent Perriard. These two gentlemen are joining us from Bern, and I'm very happy that they are here today to answer our questions and to present to you directly uh, the answers of my headquarters to certain questions you have. David Grichting joined the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs in 2009 after many years working in the private sector. Following various consular postings in the Swiss external network, embassies, consulates, including head of consular services in Kosovo, he took over the role of head of financial planning in Bern, before then being appointed head of finance and vice director of the Directorate of Resources. So he spent some time in Bern, before then uh, going abroad again, where he became uh, ambassador of Switzerland to Kazakhstan, and after that, he was appointed Director General of the Consular Directorate at headquarters in Bern by the Federal Council. And that's his current position now. With that, I come to Laurent Perriard, his deputy. He is responsible for relations with the Swiss abroad and for the cooperation with the organization of the Swiss abroad. He is also in charge of the Consular Directorates in international relations and of the projects relating to the digitalization of consular services. He has been with the consular directorate since 2011. So there is nothing that is hidden from his experience. And this was following a career with the current state secretariat for migration. So uh, with another important directorate of our federal administration. Welcome, dear gentlemen. And let me thank you again very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to join us at our town hall here, here in Southeast Asia. It is eine virtuelle Gemeindeversammlung, eigentlich, ja? une Assemblée communale virtuelle, uh, qu'on organise ici. Uh, und es hat sich sehr bewährt in der Vergangenheit dieses Format. It, it has been a great success and we want to continue uh, with it. Uh, uh, in order to keep a direct contact virtually with our community here. Before we start, let me address the question of the languages of today's town hall meeting. We know that many of you who live in Thailand and elsewhere use English to communicate with your family on a daily basis. And with this in mind, we have de decided to present the session today in English. However, we will publish a written summary in French language and in German language within the next few days. Nous allons donc aussi publier un sommaire de cet échange en français ces prochains jours. Wir werden eine Zusammenfassung dieses virtuellen Treffens auch auf Deutsch veröffentlichen in den nächsten Tagen. Und den weiteren Verlauf machen wir jetzt auf Englisch, damit alle, fast alle, das gleichzeitig verstehen können. This town hall meeting is divided into two parts. First, the Director General of the Consular Directorate will explain the Swiss policy towards the Swiss abroad and the role and operations of the Consular Directorate in Bern. In the second part, Director General and Mr. Perriard will answer questions which we have received from you, the Swiss community in our consular district, ahead of today's meeting. Thank you to all of you who have sent us uh, questions. 
we have carefully grouped and organized the questions on similar topics so that we can address them uh, most efficiently. Finally, if we have time then after these two parts, we will also answer a few live questions which we might receive online during today's meeting. If you have a question or comment in the, in the course of this meeting, you can write it directly in the live chat, so in that comment section on the Facebook live page during our live session today. Questions will be selected according to the time available and, of course, the interest of the majority of participants. This meeting is expected to last about an hour. It will end at 3 p.m. at the latest. So thank you again all for attending and here we go. So, Mr. Grichting. Dear David. The Regional Consular Centre at our embassy in Bangkok is the largest such centre for Switzerland. We have 21 staff working in three sections, consular services, visa, consular protection. It covers five countries, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia and Thailand. And the Swiss community in Thailand currently comprises 11,070 fellow citizens and together with the other countries, around 12,340 registered Swiss abroad in this area we are in charge of. This means that the Swiss government's policy on Swiss abroad is particularly well received uh, uh, here in our consular district. And we have many people interested in what you have to tell them about it. So for these reasons, could you please first explain to us the government's current policy towards our fellow citizens abroad generally. I give you the floor, dear David. Thank you so much. Bonjour, <clears throat> Grüti, buongiorno, allegra. Dear Swiss uh, living abroad, uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to us this afternoon. I would like to thank, to take this opportunity to thank Ambassador Zuallen and his team for setting up this task, uh, Ask the Embassy session. And this Facebook live format brings together virtually people living in Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, and especially Thailand with representatives of the Swiss authorities in Bangkok and Bern. And I'm delighted that technology allows us to talk to each other despite the distance. I have to say that since my appointment as head of the Consular Directorate nearly two years ago, I have noticed that the needs of the Swiss abroad are very different depending on the country they are living in, as well as their personal situation. And I therefore value direct exchanges with our communities to understand their particular situation. So, thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for being present this afternoon. I was previously living abroad myself before joining the FTFA in 2009, and I spent time in China, in La Réunion, in Mayotte, and in Madagascar. And as part of my work for the Swiss Confederation, I lived in Israel, Kosovo, and uh, Kazakhstan. So I've spent many years living in countries, and I was also a customer of the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So I understand your needs, and I understand also that um, there are sometimes um, some a share of challenges um, when you are living abroad, dealing with cultural, linguistic, political, and legal environments that are completely different from those I, uh, we know in Switzerland. First, I would like to explain you what's the Consular Directorate. Um, it has been established in 2011, um, and we are responsible for matters relating to consular services for the Swiss living abroad. And it's a federal office that reports directly to the head of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, Federal Consiglio Ignacio Cassis. Prior to 2011, consular affairs were handled by a number of federal offices and the government wanted to improve that situation. And the reason of creating uh, this uh, consular directorate was to bring all these services together in a unit and to create a guichet unique, um, a one-stop shop for the Swiss and uh, living abroad and for the consulate. So we have several roles. The first uh, is to provide efficient and customer-oriented consular services. And to do this, we define processes 
to provide a framework for the work of our embassies around the world. We are also active in training consular staff, and we are now uh, developing IT tools to modernize the delivery of consular services. And for example, maybe Laurent will um, say a few more words after me. Um, we are currently working on the consular hub. So it's a platform that aims to give you access to an increasing number of consular services directly from home. Our second role is to provide consular protection and assistance when people can no longer cope with emergency situation themselves. Therefore, we operate a call center, the helpline, and we are open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So uh, if you have any issue at night when the embassy is closed, you can call us. We are there for you all the time. And we also work hand in hand with our representation when Swiss citizens are faced with extreme situation, with extreme, um, we, are, uh, we intervene in case of death, accidents, violent crimes or uh, kidnappings. And the increase in the number of Swiss citizens living abroad, living or traveling abroad has led to a fairly sharp rise in the number of cases that requires the intervention of the Swiss Confederation. The third role of the Consular Directorate is to promote relations between the Swiss living abroad and Switzerland. And today's event is a good example of a, a new way of promoting these ties. Uh, to this end, we maintain very close contact with numerous organizations. Uh, I will only mention the, the, the most well-known, the Ausland Schweizer Organisation, ASO, or in French, L'Organisation des Suisses de l'Étranger. And in particular, we finance the Swiss Review, we provide financial support for the youth service, and we contribute to part of the organization's operating costs. We are also supporting many projects, such as the reform of the way the ASO delegates are elected. And we are also pleased to have been able to develop uh, with them new specific information channels uh, in form of webinars. Maybe some of you uh, also watched these uh, these uh, these webinars uh, of uh, these joint webinars we we provided with uh, with the OZ. Finally, um, and this is something more political. Uh, political, the consular directorate as a, as <clears throat> acts as a one-stop shop for issues affecting the Swiss abroad, and it is responsible for coordinating all matters relating to the Swiss abroad within the federal administration. And to this end, my team works closely with other federal services, cantonal bodies, foreign authorities, and other national and international partners. And in this context, my team examines all the drafts of legislation submitted to the Federal Council in order to highlight the effect of these proposals on the Swiss abroad. And when needed, um, we also propose amendments to take better account of your needs. For example, we were able to intervene successfully to ensure that the new law on epidemics allowed vaccines to be delivered abroad. It was not the case previously. Maybe you, you remember during the pandemic, uh, it was impossible to, um, to ship vaccines uh, for the Swiss living abroad. The law changed and we intervened uh, to, to, to put an option in, in the law. And we are currently also active in many, many projects, uh, EID, um, e collecting, uh, in order to, to bring the needs of the Swiss who are currently living outside of the Swiss border. And besides this, we are also in contact with the authorities in, in countries where a large community of Swiss citizens live. And in that vein, I was able to meet Thailand's director of consular affairs in Bern last September to discuss with him the problems that affect Swiss cities. But now you may think, well, why do we still are uh, why are we still facing some problem with such a motivated team at the embassy and the consular directorate, which, which is also active um, in order to promote our uh, our. Um, our cause in, in Bern. And I have to say the work of the administration, the FDFA, our consulate, our work is based on the Swiss Abroad Act. And this law, which is based on the principle of individual responsibility and subsidiarity, defines the rights and duties of citizens uh, living abroad. This law defines quite precisely the nature of the services provided by our embassies. Therefore, um, our Embassies, consulate cannot provide services that go beyond 
the framework set by the law. And overall, the parliament is of the opinion that the decision to leave Switzerland involves the individual responsibility of those who take it. And the majority of the parliament expects people who leave Switzerland to take responsibility for the consequences of their choices. And we are fulfilling the tasks set by the parliament. Uh, in a, you, ha you have to understand, in a private company, the parliament, it's like the Verwaltungsrat, uh, the the board of directors, and they are giving us um, tasks to fulfill in form of law. And by fulfilling the tasks set by the parliament, uh, we are in providing information to people who intend to leave Switzerland so that they have relevant information to guide their choices. However, leaving Switzerland means entering another legal system, and this framework can change rapidly. The conditions for entering a country, the tax system, the political stability um, can change. And these changes can have a very significant effect, even sometimes forcing people who have left Switzerland to return home or to change their country of residence. And I have to say that Swiss laws may seem too strict or too restrictive in certain areas for the Swiss living abroad. But it's up to the parliament to decide whether any adjustments are necessary. These corrections are the fruit of a detailed work and long, very long debates between the members of both houses. Everyone tries to assess uh, the consequences of a change. And depending on the political color of the members of the parliament, the vision can be diametrically different. And we saw this recently with the vote on the motion, uh, well, the postulate aimed at advancing the issue of optional health insurance for the Swiss abroad. But another example, during the debate on the 13th uh, RFO pension, um, some politicians also criticized the fact that RFO pensions were being paid abroad. So it's unfortunately not always possible to satisfy all the requests of the Swiss nationals living uh, abroad. And I understand that, that this can create a certain amount of frustration but I would just like to stress that the Consular Directorate focuses a large part of its activities on the electoral manifesto of the organization of Swiss nationals living abroad. And I would now uh, hand over to Laurent Peria, my deputy, who will brief you on the latest developments in various areas of interest to you. Thank you very much. Bonjour à tout le monde. Grand plaisir d'être avec vous uh, virtuellement en Thailand. Um, I was in Bangkok two years ago and had the opportunity to spend a very nice evening with the Swiss club in a nice restaurant. Uh, it was a very uh, small group, but very interesting. And I'm pleased to be here digitally today uh, with a gr larger group of people in order to inform you about some development uh, here in Bern. Um, I will just focus on three topics that you can find in this uh, political uh, or elections uh, manifesto from the ASO. Um, and we will have the opportunity to go back or to go further uh, into several topics uh, uh, during the round of questions. Um, the, the first point I will mention, uh, or I will speak about e-voting a little bit later, but um, still the exercise of the political rights, voting abroad is part of this uh, manifesto. and. Um, I can't assure you that we are working on that as well in Bern. Um, for the time being, we are supporting work on two levels, actually. Um, on the one hand, um, we have opened an electronic uh, interface. You don't see it yourself, but we have an electronic interface now with the canton, um, which is useful to exchange information with um, the electoral registers in the canton. Uh, in particular, this involves that registering your interest for voting, because you have to do it, you have to register at the embassy and then you have re to register uh, to vote. This information, as well as um, some changes in your update or the updating your addresses, uh, can be done electronically now between us and the canton. Um, and it means that uh, it improved the data quality. Uh, very important to be sure that we have the proper address to send the material, and uh, it avoid us and the canton to have some manual work being done and to avoid errors. So this interface is open. We are working now with the canton of Geneva, uh, which is the first canton 
uh, connected to, to this system and we hope that many other cantons will go this way as well. Again, you don't see it directly on your side, but I can show you it brings us uh, an increase in the quality of, of the data we, we deal with. Um, in another era uh, or area, sorry, we are continuing to take interest in the exercise of the political rights. Um, and it means um, Ambassador Grissing just mentioned it in one sentence, but you may have re read that the Federal Council um, has decided to launch discussions on what we call e-collecting. This is a collecting of signature for referendum and initiatives. Uh, which means that you might be able in the future abroad to uh, sign referendums and initiatives on a very easier way as it is today. Um, we are ensuring, uh, working now to ensure that your interests are taken into account into uh, in this uh, project, and uh, the work is just has, uh, has just been launched a couple of weeks ago. But e-collecting is a new name you should you, sh you should know abroad for the future as well. Uh, the other point, which is in the manifesto from the organization of the Swiss abroad, uh, concerned e-government uh, solutions. Um, um, we have the number of Swiss living abroad increasing year for year, and we are expecting a new increase uh, at the end of this year. And on the other side, we have uh, pressure on the budget side, and we don't have more resources. So more people means more services and means we have to find solution to bring you the services at the uh, level that you are expecting, even if we have more to do. And um, digital solutions helps us help us to keep this, this level of, of, of service. And we are, as Ambassador Grishting said, we are currently in the process of developing a new modern consulate digital platform where uh, we, that will provide access to a great, greater number of services as what you have now on our platform. Um, especially we're working with the Federal Civil Registry Office, which is uh, heading all the, um, the civil registry uh, affairs here in Switzerland. And we would like to limit uh, the amount of paperwork being done in this, in this domain. Uh, we would like to have more digitized processes being uh, done in, in this area. And for example, for marriages or birth certificates or birth, birth registration, we, we hope to, to be able to uh, digitize these processes in the next future. Um, this is e-government and there are other, um, e-ID is also a topic, um, it has been mentioned. Uh, it's very important if we have e-services or the e-gov services, that you can access to these services with an electronic identity. And we are working on that uh, as these, um, these EIDs now being developed in Switzerland. And uh, this new platform, just to say, is not for tomorrow, it's for after tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, we expect to have this new platform live in 2027. So in two and a half to three years from now. But maybe always important for you, it's, it doesn't change the fact that uh, if necessary, the consular services will still be uh, provided in person at the consulate. It's still part of the system. What we are doing is ex ex expanding the way the services can be, can be offered. Um, the final point from the manifesto I would like to, um, to um, mention here is the high quality information for the Swiss abroad. You are living, I mean, we are in a digitized world, but you are living far away from, from Switzerland. And it is also uh, an interest for us to work together with the Swiss organizations, but in general to have a very high quality in the information we, we offer. Our action is on the financial side, as well as on the substantial side. Finance, um, on the finance side, you know um, that we are financing on a very large, um, a very large part of the cost of the Swiss review, Swiss review, Schweizer review, uh, which is produced by the Swiss organization, uh, organization, organization of the Swiss abroad. But we are we are accompanying uh, this process and with financing it very largely. But it's not only finance; it's also substance, as I've mentioned. On one side, you see behind me the publicity for our application Swiss in, uh, Swiss in Touch. Um, we are posting from Bern. There are posts being done in Bangkok. 
And this is a, a channel we would like to support uh, even more in the future. We think it's a very dynamic and short term possibility to uh, communicate with you. So Swiss in Touch is one of our um, of our channel. And the other channel has been mentioned already it's, it are these webinars. We started with webinars dealing with uh, aging abroad. Uh, it was in 2023. Um, this year, we rather talked about topics dealing with um, working market or work market here in Switzerland. And if you don't, if you are not bored after uh, this hour with us in a couple of hours, so at noon Swiss time, 12 o'clock Swiss time, there will be the next webinar um, organized here in Bern, uh, dealing this time with um, the access to the Swiss labor market for Swiss living abroad, wanting to come back home to work here. So don't hesitate to look at this webinar today or to watch this webinar. It will be online at 12 o'clock and then uh, uh, available on YouTube as well. Uh, so it will be six webinars we've done in, our, in, in the last two years, and we are going on with this system next year as well. These webinars are organized with the organization of the Swiss Abroad and with um, Swiss, um, um, Soli Swiss, sorry. Um, well, you see, we are focus, focusing on consular services, which are very important, but we are focusing as well on, on, on the living on your living environment in general and on the working environment of our colleagues um, in Bern and in the consulate as well. We are going to continue along these lines in 2025 as, as well. And um, I will stop here for the time being. We'll come back to speak with you uh, on different topics, but for the time being, Ambassador Svalen, uh, that will be it. Thank you very much for, it, for your attention. Well, thank you very much, uh, dear David, dear Laurent, uh, for all that information. Um, it's great to have an update and many things I, I was not aware of uh, neither. For instance, uh, thank you so much for your information about this webinar. You will, uh, you will hold uh, later today. So I repeat it once again for our public today at 12 o'clock Swiss time. Uh, you can get first-hand information about access to the Swiss labor market via a webinar uh, uh, published and organized uh, by our uh, uh, direct director for consular affairs. So now, in preparation for today's meeting, uh, we have received questions from you, uh, fellow Swiss citizens from the Swiss community here in the region. So uh, our special thanks go out to all those who uh, submitted uh, their questions in writing. And since we cannot address all the questions uh, this afternoon, we have grouped the questions and identified a few key questions uh, uh, that cover the main areas of, of interest and of concern. We will not be able to address individual uh, cases and, and the very specific uh, cases that, that, uh, that are, are, are fully individual. Um, uh, but I hope that we can cover uh, most of, of, of your, your general uh, information needs uh, uh, now. So thank you again for joining us, and we hope that this session will be informative and useful for all of you. So uh, I get back to our specialist in Bern, uh, uh, dear uh, Laurent Perriard, a very old colleague of mine. Let me start with the first question to you. Uh, as the great specialist in these areas. It concerns the voting rights. You mentioned already that this is the first concern uh, of the political organizations dealing with the Swiss abroad or representing the Swiss abroad. So voting documents often arrive too late uh, or late, uh, and then sometimes it's too late to, to be able to, to vote, particularly, of course, since nowadays the voting material has to be sent back and there is no electronic uh, uh, voting. I hear that complaint quite often, and I, I try to give advice in, 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 in choosing an address closer to Bangkok, getting organized uh, uh, here in, 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 in Thailand, for instance. But the question goes out to you, dear Laurent, when will it be possible to vote electronically and for whom? I had the experience already in the past, for just a few years, it was possible for a citizen of the canton of Bern to vote electronically, I profited from that then because of costs, it seems it, 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 it was discontinued. 
And now the question is out there, when will it be possible again? Please, Loco. Thank you. And it's a very, very good question and very uh, a long uh, a question we, we are answering since a long time. But there is always some developments, and, and I think it's it's useful to, to repeat it or to remind where we are every time I have the opportunity to speak with the Swiss community. Uh, I will not make start with a constitutional right um, expose or presentation, but still just one in three words. Uh, it's important to, to understand the system in Switzerland. We have an authority in Bern being in charge of the political rights for the Swiss living in Switzerland, for the Swiss living abroad, and this is a federal chancery. This is where the, all the questions are, are, are coordinated. We from the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs, we are responsible to be sure that the Swiss living abroad will be registered in the cantonal registers. So our job is actually just an inter interface to be sure that if somebody say, I want to vote abroad, the information will go to the canton. And if there is a change in the address of the person to be sure that his address is known by the canton. This is more or less all what we do as, as a foreign ministry. We have to be clear about that. And then where, who is organizing, who is in charge, who is deciding how we can vote? This is actually what the canton are deciding. So we are very federalistic here, speaking about political rights. And I think it's, it's quite important to understand this, uh, this, uh, the way this is split between different authorities. But I go back to your question now. Um, you know, the, the possibility, and you've mentioned it was possible in the past, uh, the possibility has been suspended in 2019 by the Federal Council um, due to various security problems. Um, subsequently, after that, under the leadership of the Federal Chancery, as I've mentioned, which is in charge in, in Switzerland, uh, numerous steps have been taken to redefine the necessary technical legal and organization, uh, organizational framework. So we had to work on the security of the system, the way it's functioning and who is deciding about what. And actually the short answer to your question, when can we vote electronically in the future? The, the, the short answer is now, actually it's possible now, but I, will, I, come back, I go now to the details. Since July, 2022, so two years from now, uh, in the past. This framework ha has again been in place and electronic voting is possible under certain circumstances. So the legal, organizational and technical framework is defined. The Federal Council has said, if you want an e-voting solution, it has to be done this way. And this is done now. However, uh, as I've mentioned, the political rights falls within the competence of the canton and each of the 26 cantons must apply individually to the federal chancery for authorization to use the e-voting and they have to explain how their solution looks like. Um, and at the very end, it's the federal council, so it's a government who gives the authorization to the canton. Um, at present, only the Swiss Post the Swiss Post offer an electronic voting system that is recognized in Switzerland. So this is a monopolistic situation. And the canton of Baselstadt, St. Gallen, and Thurgau have relaunched e-voting trials using the system. The first time in June 2023 for votation, and then uh, in autumn 2023 for the general elections for the parliament. So we have experiences now for votation and for elections, and it has function. Um, the Canton Graubünden, uh, Grison, has uh, joined the group uh, in the meantime. So we have now four cantons allowing Swiss, mainly Swiss living abroad, also in, in, in Switzerland, but four cantons are working with e vote, an e-voting solution for the time being in Switzerland. So the calculation is easy. 26 minus four, so there are still 22 canton to convince uh, to reintroduce this possibility. So e-voting is again possible in Switzerland. Each canton decides independently and applies for the necessary authorization. So it's 
the canton that you need to focus on if you want to get to get the things moving. So uh, we hear you, we listen to you, but actually we don't have any power. The canton have to be addressed if you want other from the 22 cantons to get into the uh, the movement. And what I hear is that there are many cantons now considering getting into, into the system again. But uh, I have to, I, I don't like it, but I, I always have to, to remind that we are talking about e-voting. So the vote electronic stim abgabe, and that still the the envelopes, this voting material is still sent by post. So what we are doing here is just limiting the second part of the system that can be done electronically, but there are still paperwork, other papers being sent around the world. It's necessary for security reasons. We don't want all the information, all the codes necessary being sent electronically. Mm -hmm. So you get the codes by post and you can vote electronically. This is how we try to limit the, the, um, uh, the risk in the systems. Um, it's always a topic, why don't we use a diplomatic career? Why don't we use the embassies? Uh, I just can say that uh, in 2021, uh, we, 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 we try to send the voting material by diplomatic career in a, in, in a, in a small or in a pilot project. Uh, this test has also been carried out in Thailand uh, with certain cantons. And unfortunately, the results were not good enough to say it's the way we have to deal with that. It's quite complicated to send an envelope from Geneva or Zurich be up to, to Thailand. It has to come to Bern and send. And, and at the very end, the Federal Council wrote a, a, a report on that, said the future is e-voting, the future is not diplomatic. Project. It has been tested and, um, and, and it has been rejected in that sense. Well, this is where we are. So in a nutshell, again, it's possible that each and every canton has to ask for it and then to have to implement it. This is where we are now. Thank you very much, Laurent, for this update. Uh, it's very interesting. So the legal framework, it's all settled. Huh? In the meantime, you said that the cantons can just go and work in that framework. And four cantons actually uh, have done so already. But mm -hmm. does that mean that if I'm a citizen of one of these four cantons and I live abroad, would it be already possible to vote electronically then as one of these, uh, as a citizen of one of these four cantons? Yes, this is the idea. Um, the, as, as you know, in the, in the past, you could decide where you wanted to vote in Switzerland. You could, you could decide between your place of origin, Heimat Canton, and your last address in Switzerland. It has been changed in the, with the introduction of the, of the um, new um, Swiss on the uh, new act on the Swiss abroad, Ausland Schweizer Gesetz. And then it is the canton where you have you had your last address in Switzerland. And uh, if this is one of these four cantons, then you should be able to vote with e uh, an e-voting solution. Yes. Great. Okay. Thank you. That's really good news. Uh, um, uh, and I come to a different subject. Less good news recently, uh, but also uh, an issue of concern, health insurance. Uh, as we know, if we register abroad, we leave Switzerland, we cannot stay in the same health insurance uh, system, according to current law. Uh, there was um, a proposal in Parliament of Schneider Schneider, Elisabeth Schneider Schneider, a postulat actually, and by a narrow margin, that postulat, which would have led to a solution for the Swiss abroad, was rejected by Parliament. And um, so the question is, will follow-up measures be taken at the political level to ensure that Swiss nationals living abroad can be readmitted to the Swiss health insurance system in the medium term? May I ask that question to uh, our Director General? Yeah, David. Well, thank you. This is uh, as well a very, very important question for for many, uh, many people. And I'm aware that the issue of the health insurance, um, when, when you want to emigrate at uh, retirement age, th this is a key, a, key, a, a key question. And as the number of people who are living in Switzerland at um, ages above uh, 60s increasing really rapidly, 
this is a topic that we are uh, following very actively. And we just as an introduction, uh, we published last year a, a leaflet called Aging Well Abroad and trying to alert people uh, who wish to leave Switzerland um, that they have to focus in terms of health on two points. The first is, um, are there sufficient medical services available, uh, the destination of my choice? And the second question, and this is maybe even more important, uh, do we have a suitable cover? Can I get an insurance? Um, because as you know, when you are growing in age, it's uh, pretty hard to get um, an affordable uh, coverage. And against this backdrop, because there are already many people, thousands of people abroad, uh, I'm thinking of Thailand, but it's also the, we have also certain problems, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in South Africa or in some countries in Latin America, where some, uh, some people are facing uh, problems because they cannot find a suitable um, and affordable uh, health insurance. So against this backdrop, a number of um, members of the parliament have called for a discussion to be held. And this led to the postulate of Mrs. Schneider Schneider. Uh, it has been signed by 35 uh, members of the parliament, which is pretty high for a postulate. And unfortunately, this, this, uh, this, uh, this, um, this postulate has been rejected on the 11th of September 2024. And this is not the first time not the first initiative um, at 10 years uh, ago in 2014 um, Martina Carobio um, she was also an MP at that time she also uh, had a, a pretty similar request but you have to understand that if the parliament doesn't want to change the law or doesn't want to treat this topic uh, the federal office for of public health they won't uh, do any follow up on this uh, on this topic because there is no mandate from the the parliament to do so so there won't be any evolution um, on the um, within the administration thank you very much so our advice would be uh, to our fellow Swiss citizens abroad plan without the, uh, that idea which we had in the political system. It will take some time until it comes back. If you get engaged politically, you might you might help uh, the, the issue to be taken up again. We are coming to a third uh, subject, which is also of, of great interest. Uh, uh, this is a new topic uh, because, because we had a vote about that. The Swiss people has voted that there will be a 13th uh, pension um, of the first pillar uh, for everybody each year. So in December, there is one more month uh, uh, paid out. Now, when will that 13th uh, pension be paid out? Which year and which month uh, will that indeed happen? May I ask that question to Laurent? Yeah, thank you. Uh um, well, it has been now uh, decided and, and, and the information came just uh, last week or two weeks ago. So the first payment of the 13th pension uh, rate will be done in December 2026. So oh, that's two soon, huh? mm -hmm. um, it had, I mean, the, the main question is how do we finance it? But this is another topic uh, with a very high budget pressure now in Bern, but I hope um, it, it's going to, although this is paid for, but we have to find some, some money somewhere. So December 2026, it will be paid from this date once a year, um, like a, a kind of 13th um, a salary part, as, as we know it in Switzerland. So every year in December, once a year from 2026. This is how it's done, the, the reflection from uh, the responsible authorities is uh, that as many bills are arriving at that time, uh, it's a way to to uh, support the people who have to pay for for these bills, especially here in Switzerland. Yeah. Thank you very much. And is it correct that the AHV pension can only be transferred to Thailand in Thai baht and not in Swiss francs? Yes. Um, maybe an information here. Uh, here I'm just 
bringing over uh, the information we got from the Swiss Compensation Office, uh, which is responsible for this payment. Um, and if a person insured wishes to take a payment uh, in, a, in, a, in an account abroad, it's not where the people is living. The question is, where is the bank where the money is going to? And if this bank or financial institute is abroad, then uh, the money will be paid in the currency of this place where the bank has uh, uh, the bank is. There are some countries, maybe some people here, yeah, but my, I hear from somebody where it's paid, for example, in, in, in US dollar and so on. It has in some countries, South America, for example, for different reasons, um, it can be paid in a convertible currency. So for South America, for example, uh, the, the, um, the compensation office will pay um, in dollar, but normally it's done in the currency of the, the country of destination. And the um, person insured has no choice to decide. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's um, the compensation office uh, which decides in which a currency it, it's paid. Um, maybe just to preside it, the, the, the amount is, is, is calculated in Swiss francs. So it's calculated here in Geneva, actually. And uh, the person will get the equivalent in the currency of his uh, country. And the conversion into the foreign currency is done at the time of the transfer. So it's not a general uh, calculation which, which would be done, for example, uh, once a year. It's every time it's, it's transferred, uh, the currency uh, conversion is, is, uh, or, or takes place. And um, yeah, I think this is what we can say. So in Thailand, you will be paid that as soon as uh, the institute will be in Thailand or in one of the countries you are covering. Thank you very much. Well, at least we have a pretty stable currency here in Thailand. The exchange rate is quite stable. And so uh, um, it's less problematic here maybe than in some other countries with a high inflation. Well, we are still sticking to questions concerning money. Uh, we are coming to the questions uh, about tax policy in, in Thailand. Uh, that is a new subject which popped up a year ago. W what is the Swiss government's position on the new tax policy in Thailand since the 1st January 2024? In particular, the taxation of pensions for foreign residents, which has been introduced now in a in a in a manner that will cover probably everybody. Yeah, well, um, Switzerland is not in a position to comment on the tax policies of uh, of other countries. This has to be said. Uh, this is a sovereign decision made by uh, the, the the Thai authorities. And I would like to to thank you, Ambassador Thailand, for organizing a Ask uh, Ask the Embassy event with. The competent authorities, and I was um, I, I watched this uh, this uh, this um, this Facebook live, this session with the the representative of the revenue uh, division. I think it's a good way to inform uh, our Swiss citizens about changes in uh, the country of residence. But maybe two comments on my side. First, it's quite common for pensions paid from abroad to be subject to tax in the recipient's country of residence. I mean. People who are living in Switzerland and they are receiving money from abroad, uh, from other um, social insurances, they will be taxed in Switzerland. So if, no, generally, because sometimes we have some agreements with with the other other state, but normally if you are uh, receiving money um, from abroad, you are uh, subject to tax on on this um, on this kind of uh, of income. And second. The change that uh, Thailand made is not unique. I mean, um, it's a review of its tax policy and several ca countries that had introduced tax exemption to attract uh, foreign retirees, they reviewed their practice after a few years. And I have to say, uh, we have also another country in the world where there are a lot of people who are um, going after uh, retirement, it's Portugal. And Portugal changed also its tax policy back uh, in January 2024. And I know that many people living in Thailand, they have modest income by Swiss standards. 
And for these people, um, I know that the change in, 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 the, in the tax policy will have a major impact. But it's really a sovereign decision made by, uh, made by uh, the Thai authorities, and, and, and we, we have nothing to say uh, about that. Okay, thank you very much um, uh, for a top, pretty clear uh, answer in that regard. Is, is it still, uh, can you still ask, is it the duty of our embassy to inform the Swiss community about Thailand's tax policy and to do so in Switzerland's official languages? That's another question we received. I take over for the, this question. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I will have give a, an in, indirect answer here. Um, as, as Ambassador Christine mentioned at the very beginning, we are working on the basis of the mandates that the parliament is giving, giving to us. And uh, uh, in the Swiss uh, Abroad Act, also in Schweizer Gazette, Loi sur les Suisses de l'étranger, um, it said that the, 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 the FDFA, so the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, provides information to people wishing to immigrate or immigrating. And it also mentioned that this information remains of a general nature, since, uh, according to the law, the responsibility of preparing or for preparing a stay abroad uh, remains with the person's concern. So mm -hmm. the short answer would be, no, it's not our duty, but we still we are informing on different topics. And um, for some countries, we have more detailed uh, information. We have guides being available on our website, the central website of the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs. And Thailand is one of the countries where we have more detailed information on different topics regarding uh, emigrating or living in Thailand. This is done in, in, in close cooperation with the embassy to be sure that the information are up to date. And in this, um, in this case for Thailand, uh, the new uh, regulation concerning uh, this financial framework uh, will be linked very shortly now uh, on this website, on our website, topic Thailand or our living abroad in Thailand, and all the information necessary will be there. I'm not sure that we are going to, to translate all these informations. They are available in Thailand in, on the website of the ministry, so we are linking some, some, some websites. But we, we just want to assure that the information is available. That we will do. But it's not our duty to, uh, to uh, translate then local information in, in Swiss languages. That we, we, we will not do. But our website is available in, in, in German, French, and Italian, and English. Yeah. Thank you very much, Laurent. So uh, we, we as Swiss citizens, we try to help and, and service wherever, although it, it, it might not be our duty, we, we cannot get involved in the tax policies of our host uh, country or your host country. That's a, a clear answer, but still we try to, to translate, explain, and as Ambassador Grichting said before, uh, our town hall we had in February dedicated to that subject was maybe also a, an example how we're trying to be, to be helpful uh, in, in, in that regard. All right. So, uh, well, taxing, uh, it is, it is a, a subject for, for all countries. And so there, it's also a subject for the relations between countries. So could you maybe briefly explain the double taxation agreement between Switzerland and Thailand? And what are the implications of, of, of this agreement for Thailand's uh, new tax policy? Uh, Ambassador Grichting. Is that something you could comment on, maybe? Yes, sure. And this is a good news because uh, the idea is to avoid double taxation. You have to understand that sometimes if these type of agreements are, are not signed, uh, then you might have to, to pay taxes in two countries. Uh, and this is the, 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 the good news is that, that we have an agreement based on standardized principles uh, of international tax law uh, based on the OECD model tax convention with the three main objectives. First, to avoid double taxation of income and capital, to prevent tax evasion, and also to facilitate economic exchanges between the two, the two countries. And this double taxation agreement between Switzerland and Thailand uh, aims to prevent residents of both countries from being taxed twice on the same income or assets. And it lays down the rules for determining which country May tax because this is always the question 
which country tax this income? Uh, is it is it under the 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 the, the Thai? Um, uh, is it something that the Thai have to tax or the Swiss have to tax? And this is always the big question uh, in um, in tax um, in tax uh, affairs, and. Um, Therefore, this agreement de determines uh, how certain types of income are, are, are taxed, and it sets out the rules uh, for determining the tax residence of a person or a company uh, to, to allocate these, uh, these taxing rights. So we will uh, share a, a link uh, maybe after um, uh, after the, the Facebook Live so that the people who have any question, because this is very specific, and if you have a um, taxing question on, on important amount, I always advise to, to consult a tax expert in Thailand or in Switzerland. But all the information is available on the website of the, of the Federal Tax Administration uh, Office. For, for, for this uh, for this uh, topic, but this is really a good news because I have to say in some countries we, we do not have uh, this uh, this type of uh, agreement and this is something uh, that uh, in increase the tax pressure for our fellow citizens. Great, thank you very much. Um, obviously, uh, these these taxing questions they they will remain. Uh, uh, an issue of, of, of future concern uh, also for, for all of us. And at the same time, we are happy uh, when we can live in a country which is safe and secure and where we have roads we can use. And all that, of course, costs and, and, and hence we, uh, we, we have to pay uh, uh, taxes. We are now uh, quite close already uh, to the end of our uh, Town Hall, Gemeindeversammlung, Assemblée Communale uh, of today. Um, there is maybe one more question, which was, uh, which is related to, to some extent, uh, to to the to the relations between the two countries. EFTA, free trade agreement, uh, which uh, has been negotiated between uh, Thailand and Switzerland that is between EFTA and Thailand, between the European Free Trade Association and Thailand, where Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein are also a member of the association on the one side and, and Thailand on the other. It has been concluded just a few days ago. Um, do you see any any consequences from, from, from your side of the conclusion of this agreement uh, uh, last week? Uh, it will be signed uh, at the WEF, uh, end of January, uh, so uh, the conditions will will be will be improved for for uh, for in investment and for trade into both directions. Um, of course, this is a ta this is a, a question the embassy can elaborate on a lot. But since uh, I have it here on the table, I would want uh, to give it also out there to you. Please, uh, Director General, when you think of uh, 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 the Swiss abroad and the uh, uh, free trade agreements being concluded, uh, do you have any association with this question? Well, I would say not not directly, but uh, in an indirect way, uh, if you increase, if you sign this type of uh, of uh, if we um, we have this type of agreement, then we we are building. Uh, a bridge between the, or the bridge is, is getting bigger between our two countries and then that the more people will pass this bridge that means uh, in terms of visa we will have a more uh, business visa to uh, or business people wanting to to come to switzerland visiting Sw uh, companies um, uh, for training purpose and uh, as well there will be more uh, representant uh, of Swiss companies, so maybe, maybe more a Swiss expatriate in the country. So the the Swiss community, the Swiss business community in the country might uh, grow, which uh, which is a good uh, a good news and uh, has also an impact on the on the consular affairs. Thank you very much. It is indeed good news, and we here at the embassy we are very happy about this increasing uh, stimulation that will come from that new uh, free trade framework uh, for for our countries. Uh, thank you so much again. We have to come to a close to an end of this town hall. I would like to thank you again, uh, dear Director General Drichting, dear Mr. Beriar, 
for your time and for sharing with our audience all your insights and updates on consular services and initiatives as well, which are aimed at supporting and strengthening ties with the Swiss nationals uh, uh, living abroad. So with all of you uh, listening to us here. And I would also like to thank you, dear fellow citizens, uh, for the, your very questions uh, and for tuning in. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, the content of the town hall will remain available on Facebook and YouTube for an indefinite period. And we will also provide a written summary of today's conversation in French and German. Nous allons aussi publier un sommaire de cet échange en français ces prochains jours. Uh, wir werden eine Zusammenfassung dieses virtuellen Treffens auch auf Deutsch veröffentlichen in den nächsten Tagen. Und damit uh, uh, wünsche ich allen einen schönen Tag noch. I wish everyone a pleasant afternoon and evening. Uh, you in Bern and uh, uh, all of you here in the region. Bon après-midi. Ich wünsche noch einen schönen Tag. Auf Wiedersehen. Bis zum nächsten Town Hall.